um, I'd like to begin um, with a land acknowledgement tonight. I'm joining you from Treaty 6 territory, which is um, the traditional and ancestral territory of the Stony Nakoda, the Cree, the Dene, the Blackfoot, the Soto, as well as the Métis Nation of Alberta. I'm so grateful to be sharing this land with elders and knowledge keepers that value education in the way that I do and value connection in the way that I do. Um, I'm recognizing this land as an act of reconciliation tonight and as an act of gratitude um, in the hopes of a better Canada for all of us. So thank you for sharing um, that with me tonight. Um, I will let Coulter and Mari introduce themselves and then we'll be on the way. Perfect. I'm flying blind right now because I have my whole screen shared. So I'm Mari. Um, I am from San Diego, California, and uh, I am a middle school science teacher. So really excited to be with you all, share a lot of fun and learn a lot of fun as well. And I'm Coulter. Uh, I'll be working in the back here a little bit more and we'll, you'll hear a little bit from me at the very end. We'll talk about a little bit of teams together uh, and some external resources for you to use. Uh, I'm a primary school teacher, um, recently actually certified K to 10 now. So I got my uh, ABQ in science recently, which is uh, big news. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for tonight. And if at any point you have any questions, like we said earlier, feel free to unmute your microphone or, or throw something in the chat. Uh, we're here to help and we're here to walk you through things so you feel much more comfortable using Pear Deck. Nice, and I am Bailey Omberg. I am currently multitasking, so I'm going to quit that as soon as possible. Uh, I teach junior and senior high English language arts and humanities in the middle of nowhere in Alberta. We are so happy to be celebrating two graduates in, from our school this year. Um, not that there wasn't many people able to graduate, it's just there was only two grade 12s. So I've been teaching online my whole career. I teach in a blended environment because I live in such a rural remote community. Um, so I'm actually a teacher in five different high school campuses. We're all connected virtually. And I can say without hesitation at all, that Pear Deck is the absolute key tool in my digital classroom um, toolkit. I use it every single day. I use it with my grade sevens and all the way up to my grade twelves. I was saying earlier, it's a super adaptable tool. Um, so I'm really, really excited to be sharing it with so many people who are new to it um, tonight. So Mari, could you advance the slide? Oh, I will also, I don't know if you, will, you all were in it. Uh, in the call yet. I can't share my screen. So we're, I'm going to be like the pilot and Mari is going to be steering the ship and it's all going to be good. We're super okay. happy and proud to be here um, as part of the Cobblestone Collective. We're all teachers in real life and we do this because we're really passionate about sharing awesome things um, with our colleagues. So uh, we will start um, by first just talking broad strokes about what the benefits of Pear Deck are. Then you will experience it really briefly as a student. Um, I'm thinking most of you experienced with your students this morning in Mari's mindfulness when your mind is full session. So we'll take a look at it, well, what it looks like as a student to have your hands on a Pear Deck from your side. Then we'll talk teacher dashboard and um, templates, which are really awesome tools within Pear Deck that really add to the power that we have as educators using it. And we're also going to spend uh, about the better part of 20 minutes developing our own Pear Deck. And I've started a lesson for us around social emotional learning and gratitude. No, not gratitude, about identifying emotions and identifying emotional triggers. Uh, so I'm hoping that you can continue the good work that Mari started with you this morning on um, social emotional discussions with your students. And then Coulter is going to take the wheel as our resident office expert and talk about teams and the way that you can get some goodies from Microsoft. OK, um, on here we go. Um, so in broad strokes, Pear Deck is a tool that puts a spotlight on active learning and formative assessment. Um, as a high school humanities teacher, it's really easy for me to slip into lecture mode. Pear Deck keeps me honest, keeps a focus on the kids and their learning. Um, so really simply put, um, Pear Deck is a PowerPoint presentation. You begin in a PowerPoint and it allows students to think, share and react to learning in real time on their own devices, which you saw happening in action um, today. So if you could please go to joinpd.com 
And I'm just copying the link for you right now. Um, Mari, I put in Slack the link to the dashboard for this session. Yes. Do you want me to have the dashboard open? Or do um, you want me to go to the, the projector link? Could you open okay. the projector version of it? You got it. Okay. All right. So my friends, we're going to do some juggling today. Um, we're you going are to going model to model what it looks like when technology yeah. isn't. <laughs> I will model my resiliency in dealing with really lovely internet gremlins. In the Teams chat, which is somewhere, uh, I have put a link to the um, log, like the join code for this demo deck. So you should be able to follow that link. And there it is. Now mine is going slow. <laughs> oh, well, we love the internet. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Here it's fine. Link. Everything is fine. Can help just up your computers. And this is actually kind of maybe important for, for everybody. If your computer is running slow in Teams, you can always stop the incoming videos, um, which can slow your computer down and, and just have that lag with this endless loop you can see on the screen there. So if you see at the top of your screen, you'll see three buttons. We call those uh, the Timbits, the laying down snowman, um, sleeping snowman. But you can click on that and the very bottom, you'll see turn off incoming video. And that allows you to, to stop the videos of just our faces. So um, you'll still see the screen that's being shared. You just don't see the, the individuals presenting or anybody else in the call. And that should speed up your computer just a little bit. And, and every little bit helps sometimes. So. Thanks, Coulter. I actually did that. Thanks for the advice. OK, I see that we have 17 students in um, our class. Um, so we're going to do a little bit unorthodox. I know that you are probably juggling the Teams call and the Pear Deck tab now. Um, so please feel comfortable just being on your Pear Deck tab, and I will be your the voice in your ear guiding you through this experience. So we're going to go ahead, and on my end, I am going to advance the slide, and you'll see on your device, you now have a slide where you can enter a number how many jelly beans can fit in this mason jar and as you start typing your responses i can see um your answers coming in somebody said four and i would ask them to reevaluate their guess <laughs> so there is some formative assessment um right now i cannot see who your name who is making these answers i can just see a general outline of where your answers are following so you can see uh you have the opportunity to type these numbers in. So that's what's called a number slide on Pear Deck. One thing too that, you know, if you're confused, usually we're expecting like an enter button or like return to do something. On Pear Deck, you just type and leave it. And I know that can seem right. uh, exactly. a little confusing at first. So if you're like, yes. oh my gosh, how do I submit? You're good, we see it. Mm -hmm. And we can even see if you like backspace and change your answer. <laughs> All right, I see that all but two, the lizard and the shrimp have not had a chance to respond. So I have, if you're having tech troubles, um, go ahead and ask Coulter for a hand in the chat and we'll move on. Here is a written response slide. So now share how you got to that thing. Oh, the shrimp started typing their answer there. I see you now. I advanced the slide before you had a chance to answer it. So the bear did seven by seven. The bottom row had seven jelly beans. The triceratops guessed, popped into my head. And the tiger wants to eat 142 jelly beans, which would be a lot of jelly beans. So my favorite thing is I can see what you're thinking. And it's also giving me a chance to share kind of the general feeling of the room. So I can see your responses. We're going to dig into where I can see your responses soon, um, but I can see it as it's happening. I can see that some people are estimating. If this was a method, uh, class on mathematics and estimating, the folks who said, I guessed, I would say, well, okay, here's some estimation strategies that we can use. And maybe they would backspace their answer and be like, oh, actually, I use this strategy. Okay, everybody's favorite, the draggable slide. So there's an icon on your screen. Could you drag it over the adverb in each um, 
sentence. So there's three magnifying glass is just a friendly reminder that adverbs are words that describe verbs. <laughs> Good, so we're getting the general feel of it. I can see that the turkey and the puffin and the mollusk and the lizard have not yet answered. Okay. Okay, this next one is a drawing slide. Um, this is not the best use of a drawing slide, drawing in that small box. So you can also add text, a text box to this one. Don't worry about actually labeling where the mitochondria is. Who knows where it is? It's not me. I'm not a bio teacher. <laughs> um, you can but have remember fun. The, part the, of the, 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 mon the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, right? Right. Or right. the powerhouse is a meme, as my kids say. <laughs> Key takeaway <laughs> from tonight's session. <laughs> oh my goodness, the Triceratops knows. They also labeled the nucleus, so they know. Um, could I ask everybody to um, just do a big old squiggle on their slide? I want to show something in a little bit, um, but it requires some squiggles. So I'm going to move on shortly, but I just really want you to let out your inner abstract artist and do a little bit of squiggling. squiggling. <laughs> oh, I got hearts and I got true squiggles. Awesome. OK, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and move on. Just a reminder, if you're in the meet in the team's call right now, um, you're not going to see much of anything. The action is in your um, Pair Deck tab, which is called the presentation session on your tab, um, if you opened it up earlier. This question has a flag marker and it's asking you to um, mark where Algeria is. And I can see here I have lots of questions, lots of guesses up in Northern Africa. And I can see a couple of people are still working on responding. Coulter and Murray, are you in as a student in this session? I sure am. Awesome. On the last slide, I was trying to draw with my trackpad, then I realized that the laptop I was on is a touch screen. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, I'm going to show you one feature. Please try to move your flag now. You can't because I locked your screens. So that's a good time to stop. Bring your eyes back here, discuss, and now I'm going to unlock your screens. And if you try now, you can definitely move your flag. There you go. I do that too. I know Bailey's going to show like how to show responses in a bit. I teach middle school and I always lock before I project, especially mm -hmm. draggable, because they really like to um, figure out which one they are. Yeah, <laughs> big time. It becomes a draggable um, disco. <laughs> the draggable disco. I love that. Yeah, locking before you project responses is important. Um, so come on back to the Teams call. You could you could happily close that tab, that Pear Deck tab. Uh, that's our experience as a student in Pear Deck, and now we're going to dive in to the teacher side of it. Mari, I'm actually going to present, ask you to present the teacher dashboard of it now. Oh, that's where you're at right now. I am. Yeah, right? Whew, yep. You had me scared for a sec. I was just looking at two and it was confusing to me. So come on back to the team's call. Could you please let me know? Let me know your favorite hockey team in the chat. <laughs> so I know that you're back here and ready to move on. That's the last time I'll ask you to go somewhere strange and new. I promise. <laughs> and um, True blue. Oh, is that like the St. Louis blues? If you don't have a hockey team, you're welcome to say what your sport is and tell me your favorite team then. Just kind of a hockey day. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. It's still ooh, zero, zero. Ooh, Sorry, Bailey. I've got to call you out for that one. That, I'm sure that was a that was a Leafs comment for the record, Bailey. I know you're not in, in Ontario, but the true blue would probably be a Leafs. <laughs> that was so a Leafs comment. That was mine. True blue gal. So I, 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 sorry. My whole family is a Habs fan. So. Yeah, that's okay. I'm sorry. Go Leafs. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm happy to see you all back here. Uh, I cannot believe there are no Oilers fans here. I feel so alone. But anyway, 
Okay, Coulter is going to be my student now, and he is going to show us um, what happens on the teacher side. So what we're looking at right now is what's called a teacher dashboard. So Mari is showing us what I was looking at. No worries, Mari. What I was looking at as um, you were doing your responses on the earlier slides. So you can see down or on the left hand side, that's the slides loader. That's where all of our slides are, just like on any slide deck thing. So if Mari clicks on, actually, can you go up one Mari and go back to slide six? Oh, I totally, I, because rewind. Okay. Do over, Mari needs to do over. That's okay. Mari was confused. <laughs> so here you can see, here are all your responses on um, the, Algeria, the the map, of, uh, the map of Africa, in trying to identify where Algeria is. I know Coulter can tell us where it is exactly. I am not a geography whiz, so I do not feel comfortable <laughs> answering that question. Uh, I was guessing, and I think I guessed wrong. Okay. Close. I was close. I was one over. Okay. Good. Good work. <laughs> All right. Could you please go to the overlays button? So on the top. Yeah. Um, right hand part where Mari's mouse is right now, top left hand part, sorry, there's three icons. There's this list view where you can see each student's responses. You can see at the bottom it says tiger. That's the tiger's response, the turkey's response. Now, if we were doing this in our own classes without privacy concerns, um, you would see your students' names because they log in with their um, domain, their school domains. So you would see their student names. You can also sort these in a grid, which is the next button next to that list tool. Right there, yeah. And you can see all of the responses. And then there's also the overlay, which is really good for tools like this, where um, you can see kind of in general, what was the general response. The overlay though is not so good for slides like the last one. This is why I asked you to scribble because on slides like the last one, that information is totally meaningless to us. It's beautiful, inspired even, <laughs> but it is not meaningful to us at all. If you're labeling maps, if you're identifying you know, important aspects of machinery or key pieces of a text and you're highlighting pieces of a text, that's really cool information. Um, not so cool when you're doing things like that. So, Mari, if you could go to slide eight, Coulter is going to show us what the draggable looks like as a teacher. So we're going to see very shortly Coulter's icon, and he better give us a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> you can see um, the icon drags, and it drags in real time. So show us the real time. Do a little disco, dot disco. Dot Ooh, this disco. is like a dot wall. Dot disco. <laughs> so you can see it may be a little laggy for you on your video feed, but you can see I have real time examples. Now, if I lock it or Mari, do you want to show the lock screens button sure. down at the bottom? Now they can't move it. Unlock. The disco continues kind of like freeze dancing. Yeah. yeah. So the next one, the next question type is a uh, is this a number or a text? A text. This is a text slide, so you can see um, Coulter's response as it happens, which is slightly delayed. So now might be the time where you prompt and say, "Hey, I'm just asking you, how did you decide?" I'm waiting on for responses. <laughs> That's what I say to my kids. Are the responses coming through on Pear Deck yet? Yeah. So you hey, just, Bailey. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know the magic hidden behind the lock screen button? I don't. Let's put it on there. Okay, so I'm horrible at getting it to pop up. There we go. So there's actually a timer feature in the lock screen for 30 seconds, one minute, and three minutes. And I can pop that open as a teacher and on every student device, it also shows that there's that much time left. Which is so awesome. It is. Um, I also would, Coulter, would you mind backspacing your response? Because you can also see if a student starts and then quits which for me as an English teacher is really helpful. Um, if a student starts a response and gets kind of somewhere and then gives up, um, I really like seeing that learning as it's happening. So you can see how it's happening live. 
and in color, which um, for me, I, I teach in this first classroom. This is invaluable for me. This is akin to looking over a child's shoulder at their work as it's happening, um, which I know for my colleagues that have moved online rapidly this year was a big piece of their practice they were missing. So this is that really on the fly, really authentic formative assessment that happens so often in teacher for teachers. Um, made live with Pear Deck. And it's a very, very simple tool. I'm going to get you started building a Pear Deck right away here. Oh, Mari's sending feedback. I love this. So she just clicked the um, little speech bubble underneath each um, response and sends feedback. And I'm hoping I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Good job, Mari from Mari. Do you have the your student account or your student view open? Is that I what oh no because okay it's that's on okay. a different device. Okay, it shows up really simply in right in their response. There's a little bar on the bottom that says teacher feedback, or it says your first name. Mine says Bailey Onberg teacher feedback, and then they can see um, what I'm said for them, and that's super helpful um, if you're doing like longer thinking with my high school kids I often give them five minutes for a response and I don't want to talk the whole time believe it or not I don't like feeling every silence for talking um, so that's a good way to leave that one-on-one -on -one feedback that doesn't necessarily need to be for the whole class all right I think we're ready to go mm, let's go ahead on this slide deck a little you can actually go to the projector view Mari and I can okay. steer so Mari and I are actually co-presenters on this um, presentation right now, and I'm controlling the slides. So if you have a team teacher, we can both move slides, which is so awesome. So one thing I really, really love about Pear Deck is how much teacher support there is and how embedded in good pedagogy the teacher support is. So they have all of these really, really beautiful pre-created slides. They have them on every subject, but they also go for like um, social emotional learning. They have a really, I just found it this morning when I was finishing up my prep for this session. They have a really awesome ready to go social emotional lesson that's built by a psychologist. It's so cool. I'm gonna share a link with you at the end of the session, but it's like the best. So you can see they're beautiful. They cover all sorts of subject areas and they're so easy to use. It's a matter of downloading the PowerPoint and copying the slides into your own work which is just the best. So I think now, Mari, we're good to go um, back to Pear Deck and Teams. So I see Roxanne asked, does this exist in French? Now the really, the, the overarching tool I don't believe is translated yet, Roxanne, but the very, very nice thing about it is, is that you can do this from your own pair, your own slides. It doesn't have to be slides from Pear Deck. So I'm gonna actually show you how to build um, a slide deck and turn it into a Pear Deck right now. So Mari, you can go back to that Pear Deck and Teams and Gratitude slide deck, yeah. Um, how about I'm gonna pause right here about halfway through our time together. I'm curious if you have any questions or wonderings about just Pear Deck in general as the shell, knowing that we're going to spend the next 20 minutes together um, digging into what the functionality of Pear Deck is, how we start building it. Do you have questions for me? Mari, could you just go to slide 14 and 15? I'll give you a second to type a question. There are no questions. Will this work with Google Meet or Doom? Absolutely. So um, the beautiful thing about it is you can project that presenter screen. Um, I use it every day in Google Meet. My school is a Google environment. So I project, present my screen through Google Meet and it's the presentation session and I share the code with my students via classroom. Um, it embeds really beautifully into video classes, which is how I deliver my blended classes. So the the Presentation is really seamless. Um, this is an add-in in Microsoft PowerPoint, so you do not have to download it. The students do not have to download Pear Deck as an extension. It's included right in their browser. So when you joined my presentation, you just go to joinpd.com. If your teacher is asking you to sign in, um, they'll sign in with their uh, school accounts. 
and then you'll be able to see who it is. But it can also be perfectly private, like we just did uh, right now. And also, like we did this morning with your students, we, Mari and I didn't see any student names at any point today. I'm not sure about permissions. Permissions are hard for me to speak to because they're so different between boards. Um, I know that a few of my colleagues have had um, to collect a lot of information in order for to get their boards to approve Pear Deck. So that would be a, a board by board um, decision. Ah, thanks, Chantel. Yeah, um, a lot of boards like to just send permission forms for tools like this. My board sends a permission form for tools we consistently use as well. Mari, am I missing anything in the big overview part of the world? I must not be. <laughs> All right, I'm going to continue moving on then. <laughs> so um, my slide deck, Mari, are you talking? I oh, was okay. muted and oh. I, you know, and I didn't know what you were <laughs> You're all good. Don't you worry. I was just going to say, you know, I used this a ton um, before we went virtual. Um, I use it in person and it's great to keep all the kids engaged. It's good. Uh, seventh graders, especially, um, forget their glasses and they happen to sit in the back, you know, you know, that one. Um, and so it really does bring the screen right in yeah. front of them um, or those that still need glasses, uh, you know, super mm -hmm. easy. So, yeah. I love it. And it's so good for the kids that need time to think and produce their responses a little bit. Gives it for me, it keeps me accountable to wait time on responses. I've been better at including voice across my students now because it's not just the eager student um, sharing their voice first all the time. So I wanted Mari to go to slide 14 and 15 because I have. I went really quickly through the teacher dashboard because it's definitely something you need to play with. And I just wanted everybody to know that the, this resource is here for you to go back to to check out um, when you're ready. Um, if you're just getting um, into it, this I'm sure that that felt a little bit overwhelming, um, but it's definitely that resource is there for you if you need to. OK, we are ready for slide 17. So I know I can speak for Mari. Um, when I say we're super passionate about incorporating social emotional learning into our academic courses, yeah. um, social emotional learning, it, prove, it has proven impact on every aspect of a child's yeah. life. Um, and I, I take my role as um, a teacher of teenagers very seriously when it comes to developing their social awareness and their relationship skills and their decision making skills, the way that they see themselves, which is um, the topic of my English class this year, self-awareness and then self-management as well. So you can see this is Alberta's framework on social emotional learning and the way that we um, embed it within each community the child's involved with. It can be used with Google Slides and it's exactly the same. However, um, this session is generously sponsored by Microsoft, so we'll be demoing my Microsoft with you today. So Mari, could you go to the next slide? Yes. Um, we have, I have a couple slides for you on um, how to add Pear Deck to the PowerPoint. So Pear Deck is an add-in in PowerPoint. So in order to add an add-in, actually Mari, do you wanna talk? I don't wanna narrate you to your actions, <laughs> would you mind? Um, you're totally okay with it. My add-ins are down. I don't have the pictures like you do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, um, but it's okay. I get to it by clicking on the three dots and then I added it as an add-in, same as on the slides, and then now I find it right here. Right, so if you've never added um, Pear Deck before, you have to go to the add-ins tab. No, I lied to you. The insert tab on the top of the oh. ribbon there, and then those three dots, and then there add. we go. Right. And then you'll search Pear Deck. So I'm going to give you four minutes to do that right now because I want you to be able to play with us. And I promise in the next 10 minutes, you will have a Pear Deckified slide deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm it's not really quite simple. Oh, go ahead. 
I was going to say, you know, it's nice because it's not, you don't have to rebuild everything in Pear Deck. Yeah. You can take what you already use with your kids mm-hmm. and, um, you know, just throw in a few moments of engagement with Pear Deck. Just give it a try. Yep. That's the beautiful thing is this is not a reinventing the wheel tool. It's not taking something you had previously built and making it fit into the tool. It's really easy to add Pear Deck over top of it. As an example, so I teach Social 30, really content heavy course here in Alberta and um, has a ton of resources already built. And um, I'm team work smarter, not harder. So I took those like really ugly PowerPoints from like when PowerPoints were first a thing. And I don't know when PowerPoint started, but like when they were when you had like the ribbon background and all the slides took that PowerPoint, changed the theme of it. So it's a little more acceptable and made it into a Pear Deck slide. So I'm not reinventing the wheel when I'm um, developing my resources for Pear Deck. What I'm doing is being thoughtful about how my students are going to engage with my content. Mari, could you one more time show us how to do the add-in? And yes, Michelle, the it, it is an add-on in Google. Yes. So I'm in the insert menu and mine's words, not pictures. And uh, I click on add-ins at the last option hidden under our Tim bits here. Click add-ins and then do, 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 wait for it to load. Um, oh, and then in the store, you can either search or a lot of times it comes up pretty darn quick. Not this. <laughs> no, it's a I think it's simple to interface there, though. Yeah, I think the Microsoft Store is slow right now. Imagine it's in the store. I click on it and I click add, and then it pops into um, my PowerPoint. Super duper awesome. easy. It is yeah. just in the online version of PowerPoint. All right, if you are in PowerPoint, um, can you please? Um, come on back to me in the chat and let me know that you were successful. Yeah, if you have weren't finding the Tim bits, it's very likely you're not on the online version, I would say would be my guess. Or Chantel, if yours is, oh, if I stretch my screen. Yeah, if you stretch yours, like my screen is squishy, um, just because I'm trying to like side by side. So I have add-ins, you might have it in your menu bar. Sometimes the extra stuff is hidden over in the Timbits. Mm-hmm. Okay. Online PowerPoint is a uh, you. How do I tell you to navigate there? I always just go to my OneDrive and then create a new PowerPoint from there. Let's see. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I I don't remember how to get to things a lot of times, so I Google search just about everything I need to ever get to <laughs> yeah, in my life. Yeah, that's exactly what um, I do. So here's my OneDrive. Yeah, I would really encourage you to be patient through this initial learning curve because it is well worth the payoff. Um, it wants me to sign in. So that comes. So I sign in, you know, sign in with your, whichever account you're using. And you should be able to get to PowerPoint once that beautiful screen pops open. Quickly jump in here. Uh, a few of you have asked how to get to PowerPoint online. So uh, the easy way is just go to www.office.com. Um, however, some boards, you might have to go through your portal if you want to use your EDU account. So you might have to go through your, uh, your school portal to get there. Uh, most school boards, I can't speak for all of them, but a majority of them have both um, Microsoft and um, maybe a Google licensing, um, or it can strictly be Microsoft licensing, but I'm pretty sure that the majority here in Canada um, actually share the licensing um, and be able to access office.com with your EDU credentials. Um, So hopefully you can do that. And while you're there, you can also install Office programs as well. Um, And you can do that for free. So you do get the desktop versions. Uh, and there is access to Pear Deck in the desktop version as well. You just have to set that up. Mm-hmm. Right. Very cool. Thanks, Coulter. It's real nice having our resident expert. Okay, so I'm going to trust that you um, have 
navigated to Pear Deck, if you're, or sorry, to PowerPoint and you've added the Pear Deck add-on, if you're still struggling with that, I would really encourage you to stop and do that. And when Emily sends you this recording tomorrow, if you have time, um, pick it up at about three quarters of the way through the session, just so that we can honor everybody's time and get through this and give you time to ask questions with Mari and Coulter and I here to support you further on the Pear Deck part. So Mari, if you go to, oh, thank you. Here's a really good visual of how to Pear Deckify a slide. So Pear Deck as an add and you have to be on the home ribbon and then it's on the far right side and you might have to click the Timbits. You might have a beautiful picture like what I have. Then when you click that, um the add-in opens up uh, as a toolbar on the right yeah. side of your right hand side of your screen so there you can see this is pear deck this is how you build a pear deck um experience for your students so you can see the very first three things are template libraries i really really would encourage you to check those out they're so good um better than any resource on pear deck i can give you really it's truly the best stuff comes right from pear deck themselves but if you scroll down a little bit further in that um, thing. Oh, before we do this, I also want to say if you're struggling with how, how yeah. to incorporate Pear Deck into um, your lessons, those templates are really good ways of using it authentically. Yeah. So that being said, um, what you do when you're ready to Pear Deckify a slide is you just click one of these buttons and then you're ready to go. So slide 20 is actually all set up. And I'm going to ask you to um, create a slide deck similar to this. I'm not sure if we're going to get to the whole lesson, but the slide deck has the um, structure of the lesson laid out for you. If you'd like to copy it, um, you're more than welcome to. So all I've done here is I've inserted three images and my question for the students is, so Mari, if you could um, add a text box, my question for the students is, what makes you feel grateful? Or what do you feel most grateful for today? So Mari's just adding a text box. Thank you, Mari. <laughs> You're welcome. It's a it has a mind of its own right now, so we're <laughs> so frustrating. Um, but I'm asking Mari to demo this because it's um really easy to integrate into yeah. your own um resources that you already have. So if you already have slides made for your lectures or your lessons, this is um, so easy to um, create. Mari, they're showing up in the middle of the, oh, they're there. Oh. The cheerleading one. <laughs> I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> Actually, you know what this question is? I've remembered what I wanted to ask now. Okay. What makes you feel supported and calm? Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Coulter with the hookups, ambassador's account. Thank you. There we go. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mari. Okay, now Mari. Sorry, it's not pretty. To... I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. Now Mari is going to make this into a draggable slide, and this is going to be one of those icons. So she's just going to click on draggable, and then it's going to give a little bit of information about what a draggable slide is and we can actually customize. So what kind of icon do we uh, want to add? I think a heart is appropriate here. Hold on, but I'm from San Diego and I fully believe in the taco. Oh, you're right. Let's do it for the tacos. <laughs> Go ahead and put a taco on there. Oh, now I want some good food. You can change the size of it. You can change the color of it. My mouth is watering. It is supper time here in Alberta. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and then you press update slide. And now we have a really beautiful um, pear deckified slide. Our students, when we present this, and you'll notice the way you get to a presentation is already on the screen on the pear deck add in toolbar, present with pear deck. And it's as simple as pressing that present with pear deck and going live. I'm going to stop here. Mari and I had a learning moment today <laughs> when we were with your students. We totally did not think about the fact that many people join our co-taught lessons after the initial start time, which is totally fine. We, we love being able to fit into our teachers' timetables with Teams Live. So we were doing an instructor pace activity. So Mari and I were controlling the pace of the slides. 
But what we should have done was a student paced activity. So students control which slide they're on and when. Um, do you want to do this as instructor paced, Mari? So we are controlling what the students see and when. And if I can have good internet for once this evening, I can join into your little presentation perhaps. Yes, here we go. The code is. <laughs> I always take these as water breaks. Oh, yes, very good water. You break. know, like when th I'm waiting for things to load, I'm like, oh, yeah, drink water. That's a great <laughs> time to drink some more water. <laughs> I love it. Um, D I F E L E. And I'm going to join in. We'll show you that it is now, in a matter of all of five minutes, you could go ahead and go to the next slide, Mari. Um, now, Mari will know when I feel most supported. Uh, we both have internet gremlins. Is there something going on on the West Coast right now? Oh, that's right. It's that huge slide deck. Yeah. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> but you see, if I click on this one of 42 down here, I get the little slide launcher on the presentation view. Oh, do you remember what slide number I think it was? It's 20. Okay. 19. Um, 19. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And I it might take a little while to load. I don't think it's worth our time to let it load because what we're going to demo is me dragging the taco ideally into my hungry mouth, but I don't think that's worth our time right now. So internet is yeah. not, not. Um, I can come hungry. to this one and just show. Oh, maybe I can. Oh, there we go. Um, this was our old dashboard. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, remember, you can see where things are dragging and dropping. Um, but one really cool thing, you know, like Bailey said, you know, we started instructor paced. And at the end, if you were there, you know, through the end, you heard us say, oh, we're going to make it student paced now. So students, you can explore on your own. All you have to do is click those uh, Tim bits in the bottom right corner and do turn on student paste. And it makes it a student paste um, presentation. And then right. you can I'll go back and forth, make it instructor pace. So sometimes like in class, we're, you know, doing something and I say, okay, students on your own for the next three slides, you know, do this and they can pace through. And then mm -hmm. when they get to slide, whatever, they stop. And then I can make it instructor paced again and um, do it like that. So, yeah. And it's awesome for homework. If you have students who are away that day, you can make it student paced and give it to them to go through on their own, on their own time. So uh, let's take six minutes here for you to create a slide um and Bailey, are we sorry to uh oh. is Coulter gonna have enough time for his little there will have enough time i trust you okay, <laughs> okay. um Perfect. he's the master of doing things um in what time i give him <laughs> so we are going to take some time to play i would like you to create a slide deck um if you're thinking social emotional learning Ask a question like, what makes you feel supported? What makes you feel grateful? What are you grateful for today? And just add a few pictures um, for your students and then turn it into a draggable slide by choosing the draggable button on the add-in. And it's actually so easy. Choose a draggable option on the add-in, customize your drag, then you're done. So go ahead and try that out, five minutes. We're, we'll be here if you have questions. Go ahead and ask them in the chat. Are we still a smaller group? I definitely, we definitely are a small enough group. Um, uh, actually, in the interest of time, I think just chat questions today, but I'm always happy to hang out for a little bit after the session and, and troubleshoot with you. So this is your time to play. Go ahead, get into PowerPoint, experiment a little bit. What does the Pear Deck icon look like? Um, it's a happy green pear. <laughs> so on your oh. home tab, you might not be able to see it, but you have to go to those three dots, the Timbits on the far yeah. left. And I side. added it in. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see yeah. it. Thank you. You're welcome.
please take your time and experiment. This is not a rush at all. If you have questions, let us know. You could also update Bailey on the score of the game if you are interested. <laughs> Please don't. I am recording it. <laughs> okay. No hockey game scores allowed. <laughs> Might go fast enough there. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Coulter. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Danette, you will have to go to the insert button at the top of PowerPoint. You might be on the home one. So make sure you're at insert and then that add ins button, which is the two hexagons together. Hopefully that fixes your problem. Okay, your time is going to wind down here quickly now. I'm, I'd ask you to use this time to try launching this presentation and see what it looks like from the presenter side in that tool. You have about a minute left and then I'll ask you to come back and we'll wrap up our time together. So now, Danette, the icon is under the home ribbon. So you were in insert, now you'll go to home. And it's on the far right. Underneath those three dots. Hooray! I'm happy about that. Okay, my friends, would you please come back to me in the Teams call? Um, this session is recorded and it will be in your inboxes tomorrow. Um, so if you need to revisit, if you need more time, if you need to listen to Maria and I explain something again, I would really encourage you um, to take a peek there. Coulter has some awesome things to share with us about how to integrate um, teams in with Pear Deck, integrate Pear Deck into teams. So Coulter, take it away. What I want to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm just going to quickly show because I know that we're all using different LMSs. Uh, it, it was safe to assume that we're all using different learning management systems. But if you are using teams, it is a really nice, easy way to integrate um, teams and Pear Deck. So this is our um, this is our Teams meeting here, our Teams program. I'm using my desktop version, not using the browser. You can always tell because I don't have the internet bar at the top there. And um, you can actually always click on join or create a team if you were to create one. And I have steps for you to do that. But I just want to quickly show you that if you did already have a team made, um, and Teams is, is really 
a one-stop shop for everything. That's really what they've marketed this as because it really is. You don't have to leave Teams to go anywhere to do anything. Um, you can even put like Netflix into your team if you wanted to, or you've got YouTube options. Oh, you can see my mom has just missed my call or I missed my mom's call there, it's popped up. Um, but you can see that um, on my left-hand side, I have these things called channels. And when you create a team, you're given a default channel and I can always add more channels just by clicking those three dots and adding a channel. And maybe this channel is going to be titled uh, do math because it's simple. And I can create more and more channels. You can actually have up to about, a, um, you can have 170 open channels and 30 private channels. And not that you have ever come across that, but you have unlimited options, right? Um, and then you have these things at the top and these are called tabs. And you have a post tab and a files tab just to keep them organized. Post is just messages, simple messages. Everyone, I'm not going to shout it. Welcome to the math channel. So from here, though, I'm able to just keep everything organized. So it's all content of math. Now, we were talking today um, in this morning's workshop about mindfulness and social emotional learning. And what you can do with these tabs here is you can actually add more options. So I click on that plus button. And now I can add different types of tabs to work in here. So you can see I have a pair deck right there. So if I have my students on my team's learning management system and they're all in here, they're all, this is where they come, this is where they get their assignments. Um, this is your full fledged learning management system. We can also now incorporate a pair deck right in there. So they don't have to go to that join PD. They can now work directly in here and you can actually see that I've set one up. It's right here. They actually just click on the tab when they're there and they'll jump into the, the pair deck that we've set up or that you as the educator have set up for them. And there it is. So it's a really nice way. And like I said, from probably slide, I think 27 to slide 40 is just gonna walk you through a little bit about Teams and how you can set it up and um, if you are using it in your classroom, okay? Uh, and the last minute that I have that I've been given to talk about quickly is the Microsoft Education Center. So. Um, I have a link, I'll pop it in the chat in just a second, but you can head over here to create some different types of, um, actually when you sign in, you're going to be prompted with a, uh, a, joy or a PD code. If you'd like to redeem a code, you can get more and more workshop codes as you continue through your, your education journey in, in Microsoft. And when you do this, uh, there we go. Um, I would actually recommend a personal email in case you bounce between school boards or you, maybe you leave the school board at some point. A personal email will allow you to hold on to that. You can also do a backup email, but um, once you're here, you can actually set up some different things and you can take different types of training and different programs. You actually have other educators here for lesson plans. They used to have Skype in the classroom here as well, which is really cool, but now it's a separate website. So if you're not familiar with Skype in the classroom, uh, it's really a nice way to, to bring experts in the field and, and bring them into your class. So um, this is the Education Center. I'll pop the link in the chat in just a second, um, but you can head on over here and I'll actually pop, I think I have it already set up here, but you can see it's just kind of loading. Um, and as this brings us to the end,